We are spilling home stylist secrets with the one Leanna Lair Perot. Yes, we are. Give us a vote. Okay. You're going to, you've been doing this show for a long time. A uh, yeah. It's been a long time. You've been <laughs> giving us long. like secrets all along, but these secrets that you're about to spill right now, they're going to get her in trouble. <laughs> They, they are might be like, this Why? could happen. Why are you telling everyone how we get our home so beautiful? They'll never hire designers anymore. Well, you know what? Right? I think everybody deserves to know these little tidbit secrets yeah. because it's just simple ways to elevate your own home. Okay. And these are all little tricks that I don't even know that we can call them secrets. It's not like they're being withheld. Yeah. I think there's a lot of stylists out there who over the years, like myself, have come up with these little hacks and ways to do things. Mm -hmm. And we just don't realize the true value of them because they, they just become second nature. Right. So I've sent, spent two decades watching stylists on set for television and for photography, and I'm always taking notes going, wow, that's brilliant. How does everybody else not know about it? So you will today. Ooh. You're going to know about all of it today. Okay, secret number one. Number one. All right. What so are we doing? this one I love, and I do this in my, well, I really do all of these in my own house, but this one is so smart. A lot of us will buy these faux plants yep. uh, to fill a space and to bring in that sense of greenery. If you don't have a green thumb, the faux is great. Yep. They all come in the pretty standard pot. Yep. Repotting them is great, but I will encourage you to put them in an elevated pot to give you a little bit more height because mm. that in itself, the bigger the tree, the more expensive they look and they robustly fill out the space and are better for eye level. Right. This is lovely, but we can still see the faux pot in there. So yes. we're going to take it one step further. I like taking a piece of cardboard, cutting it to the size a little bit smaller than the pot that I'm placing it in. So this works particularly well if you're going to a really big pot yes. with just the small uh, faux pot inside. Okay. And then we're going to put this over top. And this gives us a base now that we can add some real fill. So whether Ooh. you do dirt or moss, and this will elevate and all of a sudden take your faux plant yeah. to look like it's real. And really this, what I also like to do is add a glue, a glue gun yes. with all of this so that you can yeah. easily take the top off with the moss and then take your plant outside if you need to do a little vacuum yeah. of it, a little dusting of it. But it just gives it that nice. elevated, more expensive look. Especially overall. because the faux plants these days are looking more and more real. So don't so spoil it by having real. them look in the pot and then they just see the plastic and the fake dirt, right? Right, exactly. And a big pot also looks robust. Yes. It makes it look more expensive. It looks good. So repot your faux plants. Okay. The other thing you Secret can do, number two. you can see with this faux here that yeah. I've used a little bit of moss as well. Yeah. But other than moss, you know, the other little trick I like to do? What do you do? Is add real dirt. Oh, this is okay. a real way to visually fool you to yeah. the point that I've had my husband water faux plants in our house. <laughs> <laughs> it's happened. That's good. Now, these little guys, the Ikea of Fedchkas, Fedchkas, <laughs> whatever they're called, the love them. And yeah. I love that they've made them to look like faux dirt on the top. Yep. But again, we're going to take it one step further. We're going to put it into a little basket or a little pot and literally just go into your garden and spoon some dirt on top. And wow. then you can't tell me that this isn't real. Yeah. It definitely gives it that real look to it. I love that. It's such a simple thing, and it's a thing that you would do automatically, but we wouldn't think to do that at home. No, exactly. So very nice. Exactly. You've got more, you've got more tips. I've got with our plants. Hair You've spray. Got hairspray. Yes. I carry hairspray in my stylist kit because nothing is more frustrating than doing a beautiful floral arrangement and having little sprinklings of the, the little grasses uh, around. Yeah. Or if you use those little berries, the faux berry twigs, and even worse, if there's glitter on them, that glitter will those. stick to everything and yes. be everywhere forever and constantly be falling. Yeah. So give your foes a little spray. Of hairspray, and that will, it, it literally gets rid of the flyaways. <laughs> it will seal in all of the little fibers there so that you won't have the sprinklings of the glitter and of your grasses yes. everywhere. So simple. I also love to use hairspray on my faux plants yeah. because oftentimes faux will be in a silk or fabric that look really matte. Yeah. The hairspray will give it a glisten and will also stop it from fading from UV. Oh, very good. And makes it a little easier to clean. So do grab your hairspray and do a little double duty on your yeah. faux plants as well. Okay, what else you got when it comes to the plants? Well. I like my faux, but real is lovely. Yes. But you know what's even smarter and better? Is what? mixing the two. 
This is okay. something that I always do for photo shoots. That's a beautiful hydrangea. So the hydrangeas the are real. real. Oh, that's but lovely. But the greenery is faux. Okay. So if you want to save a little bit of money, if you're somebody who loves fresh flowers regularly, yeah. you don't have to invest in a giant bouquet. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's just a couple of real that you mix with your faux. Yeah. So that if you have guests come over and they do little feel like, oh, whoa, it's real. <laughs> Fancy. <laughs> right? Why are you feeling my flowers? Get out. <laughs> Get out. We're not friends anymore. <laughs> yes, you can leave. Oh, and you I can remember leave. the days of buying like floral uh, to like when guests come over, and that was before I had kids. Right. Like that, that feels like a splurge now. I it have to is. buy tomatoes and produce for three hundred dollars. So. Right. Well, and there's a lot of people. I can't like my <laughs> Right? Faux, faux all day. Right, faux is a good investment, but, but it invest is nice in to the mix faux it once and buy yourself a couple of stems of real. If you're one of those yes. people who like real on a weekly yes. basis, and just tuck a couple of real in there, and you get the beautiful aroma, you get the beautiful look of a full bouquet. It looks gorgeous. Right. So don't be afraid to make. There's nothing wrong with faux. I'm all for no, there's faux. Nothing Fake wrong it till you make it. it. I love faux greens, Absolutely. and they come such a long way. Okay, so floral next arrangements. Up, floral arrangements. Yes, you're gonna so help us with those. If you're doing an arrangement with your real and your faux, yeah. oftentimes you will see the tip where people will add scotch tape on the yes. top. And that creates a grid so that you can place your flowers in and keep them from all kind of falling to one side. Yeah. Here's something that I started doing a few years ago. I started saving my avocado bags. Okay. And because they're green, you can just put them right over top, grab an elastic band, oh, so trim smart. around the edge, and the green ties in with the leaves. And now this becomes your grid for your floral arrangement. What I like even more about this is instead of the tape taking your stems out and the tape pulls off, yeah. now you simply pull the edge, mm -hmm. the elastic band will hold all of your stems together, so now you can change your water, and then place your florals back in and put it right back on top. And the Makes tape your so easy. is so hard The tape is so hard, off. you would have to re-tape if you were changing yes, the water. So that is brilliant. Save your avocado bags, my is friends. Is that not a brilliant tip? I love yes. that. Easy, easy, easy. super, super easy. Brilliant. All right. And the next. Sequence. Should we talk about drapes? Let's talk about drapes. So you see in magazines those beautiful, full, luscious drapes with the perfect yeah. kind of curvature in the drapery. Mm -hmm. That doesn't just happen on its own. It doesn't. If you have a grommet curtain, instead of them, when you push them back, kind of getting all scrunched and they kind of look inexpensive when they're yeah. all squished together in a tiny little sad strip of fabric on the side, yeah. this is what we're going to do. We are going to add some toilet paper rolls in oh. behind for every other. So you can cut them to halves, cut them to quarters, whatever smart. size you want, and it will perf keep your perfect pleats when you push your curtains all the way back. It's a spacer, and if you're grossed out by these, because people get grossed out by using the toilet paper roll, you can do your paper towel roll. Paper towel roll, wrapping paper wrapping rolls paper over rolls. the holidays. Absolutely. A little disinfectant on your toilet paper rolls goes a long way <laughs> if you are grossed out. Yes, That is but such that's a an smart easy trick. little thing that you all have been doing, you bunch of liars. <laughs> we had no idea. No, I'm the truth teller. I'm the one who's going to get you. in trouble. Thank you. Uh, another thing, stainless steel. Yeah. If anybody struggles with fingerprints or even worse when you wash the fingerprints off and yeah. then you see the streaks everywhere yes you know what you need to do what? go into your cupboard and grab some coconut oil oh. and this will buff out not only the streaks but give it this lustrous look on your stainless that's and such a good idea you do a little buff and it will yeah. take off all fingerprints if you think about it you your fingerprints are the oil yeah. on the stainless steel right. you're just now giving a, a very thin layer of buffed oil on there right. will make it shine and sparkle this works also great for marble Oh, beautiful. Yes, a little bit of coconut oil on marble. Okay. Uh, books well, is I don't one of... have any marble, but thank you for the tip. <laughs> <laughs> Moving right along. Uh, <laughs> books are one of my favorite tips for using as risers. Yes. Now, I like to wrap them in craft paper, so this is just a really simple DIY. Yeah. Uh, and I particularly like to use these as a stylist for when I have a room that perhaps has a sofa with two end tables that are not the same height with lamps on them where you want the lighting to be consistent right. of level. So I've ele I'll elevate one lamp on one end mm -hmm. and then I get the same heights just to achieve that symmetry is really great. And you're getting these like thrift. Thrift store. Oh yeah. my gosh. You can get boxes of old encyclopedias for free if you dig right? deep enough online in the secondhand economy or pick them up really inexpensively at thrift stores. I'm shocked that no one wants the encyclopedias anymore. Because <laughs> they're not? still so factual. What came and took over that? And oh, last the internet, but not you least say. Yes. is pillows. throw pillows. Yep. So always buy throw pillows with a zipper. 
because then you can take off the cover, they're easy to clean, but also I prefer to buy them with a zipper so I can change out the insert. This was the insert that came in that pillow. It was sad. That flat. one is more robust, but you yes. know what makes it more robust? Pull out what's on the inside. I store all of my seasonal cushion oh, covers inside my pillows, smart. so it's easy to swap. And they're all together. They're and all you're in not one place. Looking everywhere for them. That's so it. smart. She's Bingo. unlocked the secrets. Let's go to break.